Exactly. And this will be A given B2. And those are your denominators. Understand? So it's just the same thing. So if you are dealing with two events, from here, we use this part. If you are dealing with three events, from this, you go to that part. Okay? So, using two, probability of, okay, so maybe I can write that first. A intersection B1 will be probability of A given B1 times probability of B1, probability of A intersection B2 will be probability of A given B2, you can write, because I'm just going to write the formula now, and probability of a intersection B3 is simply probability of A given B3 times probability of B3. Therefore, wait, is that 2 or 1? I didn't get enough sleep. Colista, you didn't say that today. <laughs> Therefore, Using two, probability of B given A will be, so denominator is probability of A, and that will be probability of A given B1, probability of B1, probability of A given B2, probability of B2, probability of A given B3, probability of B3. Okay? And at the top is simply, oh no. So everyone, guys, when we say probability of B given A, which of the Bs are we talking about? So we say B I, in the sense that it could be any of them. Okay? It could be any of them. Are we trying to find the probability that this occur, given that A had occurred? Are we trying to find the probability that this had occurred, given that this had occurred? Are we trying to find the probability of B3, given that A had occurred? So whichever one we are trying to find, is going to be, please look up, please. Please, please, please look up. Probability of the event you are looking for, given that A had occurred, it's going to be this. That same event is responsible for the numerator. But probability of A can be broken into either 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, depending. Does that make sense? So it is one of those partitions that we are discussing its probability here, given that A had occurred. But when you are dealing with probability of A, you are considering all the possibilities. Am I making sense now? So we are not just writing. Probability of B, we are saying, oh, probability of BI. We don't know which of the Bs we are dealing with. So, but whichever B we are dealing with is going to be our numerator. So, that will be probability of A given BI, probability of BI. So, if it is 1, you have 1, the same thing here. If it is 2, then it is here. If it is 3, am I making sense? Okay, so using 2 for I equals one, two, three, this happens. So this is the base theorem for three events. And that is the uh, formula you can see there.
I also project the question because it's a long I could play this for you first. In this example, Everyone. we explore Bayes' theorem, which is a formula for calculating conditional probability. Two marbles are randomly selected from a can without replacement. The selections are therefore dependent. Notice that in this question, we are working towards a conditional probability that the first marble is green and the second marble is blue. We label these events A and B respectively. For the first draw, there are four blue and two green marbles. The probability of A that the first marble is green is two over six so and the probability blue. We label these events. If you listen to that, you are thinking in the long term, kind of. You are not just focusing on probability that the second is blue. Look at this. The first is this, given that it's, so that's a conditional probability. That's one. Two, the order is specified. The first marble was green. The second marble is blue. So even this question is related to that. So when you are labeling which event should be A, which should be B, this should give you, this should be at the back of your mind. Am I making sense? So if A is the event that the first is green, and B is the event that the first is, second is blue, then this is just talking about probability of B. Why this is talking about probability of A, A given that B had occurred? Am I making sense there? So again, the end is put into consideration that, oh, this is a conditional probability. But the first one doesn't look conditional, of course. Probably that the, the marble is blue. OK? Oh, this is a conditional probability. Since I'm still going this route, then from the beginning, this has to be taken into consideration. Oh, let A be the event that green is the first one. Let B be the event that blue is the second one. So it means this is talking about probability of B with no condition. Why this is talking about probability of A, given that B had occurred? Am I making sense now? So I want you to get that clear first. So let's, let's start that again. And B, respectively. Sorry. In this example, we explore Bayes' theorem, which is a formula for calculating conditional probability. Two marbles are randomly selected from a can without replacement. The selections are therefore dependent. Notice that in this question, we are working towards a conditional probability that the first marble is green and the second marble is blue. We label these events A and B respectively. For the first draw, there are four blue and two green marbles. The probability of A that the first marble is green is two over six and the probability of not A is four over six. If a green marble is drawn first, there are four blue and one green marble left. The probability of B that the second marble is blue is four over five, and the probability of not B is one over five. If a green marble is not drawn first, there are three blue and two green marbles left. The probability of B that the second marble is blue is 3 over 5, and the probability of not B is 2 over 5. In part A, we seek the probability of B that the second marble is blue. This corresponds to two different branches on the tree diagram. As we have done before, we multiply the probabilities on each branch, then we add the probabilities from the branches together. However, 
This time we will write this calculation using conditional probability notation because it will help us understand Bayes' theorem. On the first branch, we have the probability of A times the probability of B given A. On the second branch, we have the probability of not A times the probability of B given not A. Look at the two statements of Bayes' theorem in your book. You can see how this ex... I want to explain something there so we can be clearer. I told you earlier that you can see this in the tree diagram. This is not new to us, right? We always use this to calculate probability. But why is the insistence of uh, conditional probability? That is what we have always been doing, unknown to us. This, if you are looking for probability of B, you are talking about these two branches, right? So you are multiplying these two. What exactly are you multiplying? You are multiplying the probability of A times the probability of B, given that A had happened, because it's coming through the branch of A. Does that make sense? This is probability of B prime, given that A had happened. OK? So when we multiply these two, we are multiplying probability of A, nothing had happened before, times probability of B, provided it passes through A. That's the conditional probability. And this is the denominator of our base theorem. OK? Similarly here, probability of B here is probability of not A times probability of B given that A does not occur. So this figure is not just probability of B. It is B given that A does not occur. This figure here represents probability of B given that A occurs. Do you understand that? So that's the connection. That's why I told you we're going to see this in the, in the three diagram very soon. And if you can understand this way of solving it, sometimes some people are more comfortable with getting the denominator first. Sometimes people are more comfortable with substituting directly into the formula is your choice. Okay? In this case, the denominator is a first question. So when we get to the second question and apply Bayes' theorem, the denominator has been worked out already. It's just going to be substituted. Understand? Okay, so let's listen. Somebody are feeling sleepy. You want chocolate? Closing your eyes, closing your eyes. ...for the probability of B converts the one statement into the other. We substitute the values for these probabilities and find the probability of B is two-thirds. In part B, we now seek the conditional probability of A given B. Bayes' theorem gives an alternative statement for this probability. What does this actually mean? The denominator of the fraction is the probability of B, which we calculated in part A. Remember that this was the sum of the probabilities of the two branches which led to B. The numerator of the fraction is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. This is the probability of the one branch leading to B, which also gives A. So, Bayes' theorem gives the fraction of the outcomes leading to B, which also give A along the way. This is a practical definition for the conditional probability of A given B. Bayes' theorem is useful because the probabilities in the numerator can be read directly from the tree diagram. And we already saw how to calculate the denominator in part A. So, the probability that the first marble was green, given the second is blue, is two-fifths. Does this make sense? So we're going to take one question together. Start thinking about, can you try to draw a three diagram for number one? When we meet tomorrow, we are likely going to do some of this practice again on Zoom. Okay? And I'm preparing past questions on probability. We have, this is everything about probability in IB. Okay, but probably we are going to do probability distribution later. That's a different thing entirely. Try to draw a three diagram for question one, maybe in a rough paper or something, while I get the space ready. You can look at it from here.
you done? Read the diagram. Uh, this is in green because it's only for HLPE. Oh. Yeah, even the J part also. Oh. So even though the book is for both HL classes, but this is only this section is only for AA. So question one. Look. Coffee machine, uh, coffee machine produces two products, right? A and B. Oh, no, there are two coffee machines. A and B. Machine A and machine B. Are identical, uh, okay, in identically shaped plastic cups. Okay. Coffee machine A and B produces coffee in identically blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Machine A produces 65% of the coffee. Machine B produces the remainder, which will be 35 percent. So the probability of a coffee being produced by A, we can get that. Probability of a coffee produced by B, we can get that. Now, machine A underfills a cup 4 percent at a time. So you have for medium size, it doesn't really give you the size. So 4 percent at a time, this happens to machine A. Then 5% of the time, this happens to machine B. So we already have our two events if you look at it. The first event is which machine is producing it. And the second event is, is it underfilled or not underfilled? You must be able to identify this event. Understand? And you can actually get that by looking at your question. A, copy is, a, a cup of coffee is chosen at random. Find the probability that it is underfilled. You see, that is an event that a cup is underfilled. Understand? Then look at the second question also. A cup of coffee is chosen at random and is found to be underfilled. Find the probability that it, is, it came from machine A. So that's another event. So if you don't know how to identify your event, go to the question. Okay? So we can say let A be the event. That uh, let A be the event that uh, what do we, what do we take as the first event now? The that the machine A produces. Hmm. So if I say machine A produces the coffee, then A prime would be machine B produces the coffee. Yeah. So let's write that instead of A and B, we just say A and A prime. Is that okay? Okay. That machine A, that machine A produces the coffee. Because also here, machine A produces the coffee. I was going to say A and B, then I thought, okay, that would be like three events. Let B be the event that what? That what? It is, the coffee is underfilled. That the coffee is underfilled. Coffee, we not like that. Coffee is on the Okay, please. Now, the event A is always the first, right? So this is event A, then this will be not event A. Okay? Then, event B, not event B. Event B, not event B. Okay? Let's put the probabilities, please, everyone to be part of it. This is the probability that machine A produces it. So machine A produces it will be 0 0.65. Then A does not, 0 0.35. If machine A produces it and it is underfilled, A underfilled how many times? 0 0.04. 0 0.04, then it does not, 0 0.96. B underfilled? It does not. Okay? So the questions. The first one. A. A cup is chosen at random. Find the probability that it is underfilled. Underfilled is B. Right? Underfilled is here or here. So basically, 
we are talking about these branches. Is that not? But you can't just say this times this. You are now base theorem student. You should be able to write in terms of uh, base theorem. So probability of B is equal to probability of, so this will be probability of A times probability of, how do we write this? B given A. B given A, very good. So you can look at it from the three diagram, if you don't even remember the formula. Plus, this one will be this times this, right? Or you could do this times this. So here is what? Probability of not A times probability of B given not A. Very good. So we substitute. So what is that? 0 0.65 times 0 0.04 plus 0 0.35 times 0 0.05. We're going to get that because we have to leave. B, probability of, what is the second question? Now, a cup of coffee is chosen at random and it is found to be underfilled. Callista is found to be underfilled. So that is already given. Find the probability that it is produced by A. So how do we write the conditional probability? A, find the probability that it is produced by A. It is produced by A, that's A. That's event A. So we want to find the probability of A given what? A. Given B. If the question is find the probability that it is, uh, it is, it is not on the field, then it will be given B prime. Because you already wrote, put, put this here. That's why I said your question should determine your event. All right? So this will be, according to your conditional probability, According to base theorem, so this is, but I told you it's going to be the flip one, okay? So probability of what? B given A times probability of? That's always the first one. Okay. Divided by probability of B given A, probability of A. So I'm setting the base theorem, so the sort of, plus probability of B given A prime times probability of A prime. Okay? So this will be, what is, this is just the first one here. So I'm just going to write 0 0.65 times 0 0.04 divided by whatever answer we got here. What is the answer here? Quickly. Then just put the answer, yes? Anyone? 0 0.0425. Is it terminating? No, 435. 435. So it's terminating decimal? Yeah. OK, so 0 0.0435. So what is the final? Yes. 52 over 87. 57 in decimal. Does it terminate? No. Okay, so you can. Let's write the three grand figures. Uh, 0.598. 598. You can write both, whatever they want. Understand? So I'm sorry uh, for delaying a little bit. See you tomorrow.